So math. One of the important things is to support children becoming flexible with how they think about math and understanding that there's not one way to just solve any kind of problem. And that's one of the limitations with teaching specific strategies or drilling and strategies is that a lot of us, even as adults, will will reach the same answer by following different paths. So when we're guiding young children, we want to help them apply mathematical skills and ideas and in uh, actual kinds of situations and solving problems and support them in connecting the, the more foundational ideas of math to more complex math problems. So this means that children should have extended time for exploring materials and space in ways that aren't prescriptive in ways that aren't uh, pre-planned because they're, they're exploration times and they need time to be able to engage and uh, see how those different shapes and different sizes relate to each other. Uh, play is so important for developing concept of numbers and concept of, of math. So building with blocks, playing board games where we can count our spaces or uh, counting games or using manipulatives that we can sort and put into uh, counting groups. All of these help us to uh, acquire a real sense of number and, and the meaning of number, that, that the number isn't just a label, but it has a, a, a value. So math skills do include counting and shape identification, but they're really more than that. It also includes higher-ended skills like problem solving and, and, and reasoning and being able to represent or write or draw that, uh, that math problem and being able to discuss it and tell someone uh, about those numbers. So some mathematical terms to know in your, in your reading. There's a, a page I put in that's just a list of of these terms that are often used in early childhood. Uh, one of the words that you'll often use is classifying, um, which has a lot of related words on here to what classifying is. There should be a word called uh, attributes on there too. And you classify things by attributes, which are any characteristic look like color or shape or size. We can classify things that are alike or classify things that are different. So the most simplest form of classifying is matching, where you match two things based on a similarity in one of those attributes. So they're the same color or the same size. Uh, you can get more complex by grouping things together based on that similarity, sorting things that are alike and different. And seriation, which is putting those objects in order along that attribute. So it might be in order by number or in order by size or by volume, by some, some dimension of the attribute. Um, some other terms that are there, conservation of number means that the child recognizes that if you change some properties of a set, it doesn't change the number. So if you have five pennies and you spread them out, it doesn't mean that there's more pennies, there's still five. So they retain that concept that the number stays the same. Subitizing means uh, it's when you can look at a set of things and, and visually instantly infer the total number rather than having to count each one. So if there were three toy blocks on a table, a child looks at it and says three rather than having to count one, two, and three. Subitizing is a skill that we see by, by about four uh, groups of five or six objects sort of can subitize. Think about this in terms of playing that board game. Um, it's the difference between a child rolling a dice and counting one, two, three on the dice and then counting one, two, three spots to move. The four-year-old will roll the dice, look at the value of three, and then move three whole places. So that's a more complex uh, opportunity to observe subitizing right there. Cardinal numbers are numbers that uh, denote the value. So one, two, three are cardinal numbers. Ordinal numbers are those that say order, like first, second, and third. Empty set is the set that has no value, so zero. And, and understanding 
that concept of zero is an important part of understanding of math. One-to-one -one correspondence is knowing that when we count, there is a number and only one number for each thing we count. So one, two, three versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a child can have order and, and understand that I count an order from one, two, three, four, five, and not have one-to-one -one correspondence because they could point to one thing and say one, two, three, and then the second thing is say four, five, six, seven. Uh, so one-to-one -one correspondence is an important skill there. And the other one I see I didn't say is part, part, whole, which is that idea that a whole can be divided into two or more parts. Patterning is uh, recognizing repetition in attributes of, of, of a group of objects and organizing based on those patterns. So some of the important skills for preschoolers three to six are counting and sub, subitizing, adding, subtracting, sorting, classifying, uh, writing numbers and place value, place value. Some things that early childhood teachers can do. One is to use uh, accurate mathematical terms. Instead of solving problems for children in, in real life day-to-day -day situations, encourage the children to reach their own answers. So how many plates will we need for snack? I uh, will we'll think about it. How many will you need? And they can count the people. Uh, provide appropriate support as children's skills and understanding develop. So that scaffolding, stepping in uh, as needed. And I, this, this PowerPoint has the oddest little way of throwing in these things are coming up and going away. Uh, and really what we're interested in isn't the rote learning of, of memorizing uh, simple mathematical rules or number order. It's understanding that numbers have value. Uh, link mathematical concepts and skills throughout the curriculum so it's not this isolated math time of the day. We're doing math in the block area, we're doing math in the dramatic play, we're doing math when we do construction and art. So every day, those kind of real life everyday experiences are opportunities for math learning. Uh, there should be opportunities for materials to categorize and classify and display so the children get opportunities for that sorting and classifying. Um, observe, watch how children are interacting with materials and ask them open-ended questions about them. How would you have more? How would it be above, below? Those kinds of questions about relations. The classroom, children should be able to access uh, counting materials, uh, manipulatives uh, and equipment. Some things to watch out for. One is having too low of expectations for children, not expecting them, uh, not respecting their abilities here to, to do counting and to do, uh, to think about groups and to think about what's alike and different. Uh, two is not allowing for meaningful and active experiences and not giving enough time for that real hands-on type of activity. And just one final thought here, or looking at math as that isolated time, um, keeping things where kids can't get them. And one final thought about math. Math can be an area where children who are learning English um, feel some, some confidence because the math the concepts, even though the labels of the numbers are, are dependent on the language, the underlying concepts are not. And so concepts of number are not dependent on, on the language. And so children who, who may have more skills on a language other than English may have uh, opportunities to develop those underlying math concepts. And so they may find that an area uh, that's 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 comforting and uh, familiar.